Professor Daisuke Miao, it's a pleasure having you here at the ICT and thank you for joining us for your lecture. We would, we would like, I would like to ask you some questions, like, for example, I wanted to know um, regarding your book, could you like give us a more, a more uh, uh, in-depth preview of it, mm -hmm. if possible? Sure, uh, thank you very much yeah. for having me. Uh, my book, uh, with the title is The Aesthetics of Shadow, Lighting, and Japanese Cinema, mm -hmm. which was published last year, 2013, from Duke University Press. Mm -hmm. um, it is about um, lighting, the history of lighting in uh, filmmaking, um, how lighting, um, how important lighting has mm -hmm. been um, in the history of cinema. Mm -hmm. So it, uh, one goal that I has um, is to um, connect uh, the critical studies of cinema mm -hmm. to uh, film practices. So I would like to start the conversations between uh, the people who makes films, who make films, and who study films. Um, and uh, so that's one thing. And the other thing is um, I am always interested in the people and things um, that cross borders. So um, my first book was about Sisu Hayakawa, who a Japanese actor who mm -hmm. became uh, a star in Hollywood in the 19-teens. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, he was also very famous in France and in Europe as well. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, when I was doing this, uh, the research on Hayakawa, mm -hmm. I encountered uh, some other Japanese people who were in the United States in the 19-teens and 1920s. Uh, one of them was Henry Kotani. Um, he was a cinematographer. Oh, he acted in some films with Hayakawa, but he became a cinematographer under uh, the famous filmmaker Cecil B. DeMille. Um, and uh, he was invited back to Japan in 1920 when Shochiku, uh, the major studio in Japan, uh, entered the film business. Um, so um, those people and uh, technologies of lighting, mm -hmm. um, those things um, that could easily cross borders, um, that attracted me, or st still attracts me. Mm -hmm. So um, those are the things that I really wanted to pursue, explore um, mm -hmm. in, this, in this project. Yeah. Regarding you know, the lighting, is it m any more the, according to like, is it more implemented still in the Japanese art and the Japanese f f uh, film you know, film industry? Yes mm -hmm. and no, uh, because you know, uh, lighting is uh, the core of filmmaking, which is not limited to Japanese mm -hmm. cinema, Japanese filmmaking. So yeah, definitely it is. It has been very important for mm -hmm. um, filmmaking in Japan, but it's also the same in Hollywood, mm -hmm. in Europe, Germany, of course. Yeah. Yeah, because like. When you, since you mentioned Hollywood, I've noticed in Hollywood there's been this increased trend mm -hmm. in using uh, color tints. Mm -hmm. You know, like uh, for example, we have post-apocalyptic movies that they are a shade of gray. You mm -hmm. have big gray. Mm -hmm. You have right. this crime noir movies which are with uh, black and white mm -hmm. or blue mm -hmm. blue tint. Right. Could you, what could you like say? What is your opinion on it? Or mm -hmm. if it is like an abuse of Abusing it. <laughs> uh, not necessarily abusing. Um, yeah. Well, there is a convention of generic lighting, so mm -hmm. uh, and colors. Mm -hmm. So, for example, film noir, um, they tend to use low-key contrasty lightings um, to enhance the sense of mystery or sense of um, what darkness. Yes. Both themes, right? Uh, and comedies, for example, they tend to use flat, bright writings. Yeah, Ex bright lights, yeah, yeah, exactly. Except for the clo except their close-ups for the stars, right? Mm -hmm. They have yeah, to use yeah, a yeah. beautiful three-point lightings. Yeah. Um, so, uh, in color films as well, yeah, melodrama of Douglas Sirk, for example, mm -hmm. uses a very vivid colors, and each color, is for, uh, especially uh, red color, you know, mm -hmm. has a very specific meanings in those films, mm -hmm. at least symbolic meanings, right? Yeah. Um, and detective films, um, like you said, um, mm -hmm. even in color films, they have a feeling of black and white. So, um, yeah, the choice of colors, choice of lightings, um, especially in Hollywood, um, genres play very significant roles.
Is this I wanted to ask? Is this use of tint uh, also common in in the Japanese uh, cinema? Or really? I think so. Yeah, uh, film technologies, uh, film styles, uh, they don't necessarily presuppose the national borders. Um, so, um, for example, when um, Japanese cinematographers in the 1930s. Um, mm -hmm. Uh, what well, they actually appreciated uh, the films of Joseph von Stamberg, for example, films like Shanghai Express, mm -hmm. uh, Brown Venus, very much. So they wanted to uh, recreate, you know, such uh, low-key, beautiful, uh, glamorous writings uh, mm -hmm. on the Japanese soil as well. Um, so uh, when they were, when they wanted to do that, they were not necessarily thinking about the national borders, right? And they wanted to uh, create. Um, the beauty of shadows um, for of, of their own as well. Mm -hmm. So um, they were more about uh, um, negotiations or, uh, or communications among uh, filmmakers and film uh, film technologies. It's not about um, uh, uh, international affairs. It's mm -hmm. more about the connections among technicians and filmmakers, right? Mm -hmm. um, I wanted to ask, as a novice that I am, I wanted to ask, um, Japan cinema, what is it mostly known for? For example, Hollywood could be seen about this mm -hmm. big budget, mm -hmm. big mm -hmm. budget uh, mm -hmm. uh, projects that they have, mm -hmm. very action ones. Yeah, that is really or, true. you know, as we heard, I heard in uh, one of the yeah. lectures today, Hollywood is about winners, Europe is about losers. <laughs> the movies. So, what would Japanese uh, uh -huh, cinema uh -huh. be mostly uh -huh. mostly known for? And yeah. if it can reach a wide uh, an international audience, because mm -hmm. in my mm -hmm. observance, mm -hmm. uh, part of my ignorance, I mostly mm -hmm. I mostly know that uh, what people attract to, uh, are attracted to Japan is mostly from its animes and mm -hmm. mangas. Mm -hmm. And right, this is not right. your field exactly. <laughs> Just you know, just saying how could mm -hmm, how mm -hmm. can Japan you know kind of mm -hmm. expand another part of its culture, mm -hmm, more mm -hmm. refined, I would mm -hmm, say, part mm -hmm. of its culture. I think it's more it's a it's an issue about communications um, and uh, mutual um, understandings, uh, mutual expectations, and publicity. Um, to be specific, uh, for example, in the 1950s when. Mm -hmm. um, Japan was trying to um, recreate its own cultural identity in international relations. Uh, they resorted to making a certain kind of Japanese films for the international audiences. So there was a, a gap between uh, the genres uh, that were popular in Japan mm. and in international markets, right? Mm -hmm. So in Japan, for example, a very um, nostalgic, uh, sentimental melodrama mm -hmm. is very popular. So everybody can, you know, um, cry with the characters. <laughs> but <laughs> those see, uh, contemporary dramas were not necessarily uh, exported to international uh, film okay. festivals. Uh, the international audiences wanted to see more exotic, um, you know, uh, traditional Japanese um, I've heard of culture. This, I've heard of this movie, Yojimbo, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That was one of successful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yojimbo is an interesting case. Um, it's it's more of a mix of um, Japanese and Hollywood mm, um, cultures. Yes, 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 yes. Um, but uh, in the early 1950s, films like Rashomon by the same director, mm -hmm. Kurosawa Akira, and uh, Mizoguchi Kenji's film, Ugetsu, and mm -hmm. Kinugasa Teenosuke's film, uh, Gate of Hell, Jigokumon. You know, those films were not, um, at the very beginning, um, it was not intentional. Like Rashomon received the Golden Prize uh, at the Venice International Film Festival. Mm -hmm. um, but after that, um, some Japanese film producers um, they sensed a kind of an expectation from the international uh, audiences uh, for Japanese films. So intentionally, you know, they uh, try to um, emphasize this traditional uh, mm -hmm. or invented traditional aspect and uh, uh, mysterious, you know, qualities mm -hmm. of Japanese culture, uh, whatever it is, I don't know. <laughs> so um, that's one example, but, you know, there was a kind of a communication, um, of, you know, expectation, mutual expectations mm -hmm. about each culture, each, you know, film markets. So that's one um, issue that we can think about. Mm -hmm.
just as a general question, you, what do you think usually Japanese cinema is mostly popular with? And I'm saying, you know, the mm. I'm not talking the action blockbuster ones, which, mm-hmm. for example, the Kaiju films like Godzilla. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm speaking the other, you know, mm-hmm. other. Mm-hmm. Where do you think are they mostly popular in Asia or also? Outside? Right. Yeah. Uh, there still is. There still are some gaps um, in terms of the popularity of mm-hmm. uh, certain films in Japan and in uh, foreign market, international markets. Uh, in Japan, uh, I think the most popular films nowadays are uh, based on TV uh, series. Um, so, uh, in some cases, the last episode of a f- uh, TV series mm-hmm. is made into a film and yes, released. Yes, yeah, right? those um, so, those films, I don't think international audiences are familiar with mm-hmm. very much. Right? I see, I see. Yeah. Um, on the other hand, um, some types of uh, manga or uh, anime, mm-hmm. uh, they were not necessarily popular in Japan. So. Yes, yeah, they so, became popular. Right. So, um, similar kind of a gap uh, in the 1950s is repeated um, nowadays, even though you know, the historical contexts are different. But you know, uh, this issue of negotiation, um, communication is still existing, I mm-hmm. think. I um, wanted to ask, um, in in your usually in Japanese movies, mm-hmm. uh, what uh, like are aspects of Japanese life uh, emphasized there? Mm-hmm. Like you know, usual normal life, how they mm. how like because you know in America you usually see as a very consumerist <laughs> consumerist <laughs> population or like with some wacky adventures uh, sometimes uh, with some family yeah. dramas well, yeah. in Jap- well in Japan which yeah. you feel that the tradition somehow mm. is still part there yet mm. there's still this also overlap mm. of modernism mm. Because, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. which is part of the culture mm. which is part of the mm-hmm. mentality of the people right. Right. Yeah. Um, once again, um, I, I'm kind of repeating myself, but yeah. that's not yeah, limited mm-hmm. to mm-hmm. Japan. Um, well, even in the United States, I think, there mm-hmm. are uh, diverse perspectives about uh, the lives of ordinary people. So, mm-hmm. of course, you know, uh, the most successful films uh, from Hollywood are, um, you know, blockbuster yeah, action yeah, yeah. picks or uh, um, comedies, comedies mm-hmm. you know, um, star films. Um, but at the same time, you know, there are diverse uh, culture in the United States, and that that's the same in mm-hmm. in Japan, right? Um, so even though the most popular films from Japan are based on TV series, um, mm-hmm. there are uh, diverse um, genres, uh, perspectives um, in Japanese cinema as well. If I may ask, <coughs> this uh, TV series are the Japanese TV series or mm-hmm. are based usually from uh, from foreign TV series? Sometimes. Sometimes, mm-hmm. yeah, um, uh, styles and stories, um, yes. Mm-hmm. Uh, a final question just to say, uh, we can say that uh, Britain is branded by James Bond. Mm-hmm. Uh, America can be branded by, I don't know, Sylvester Stallone, <laughs> uh, Sylvester Stallone or Ar- Arnold Schwarzenegger. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, and this doesn't have to be action, it can be any, mm-hmm. any mm-hmm. symbol. Mm-hmm. What could Japan exactly be branded with? The Sloan Samurai? <laughs> <laughs> Popular image, yeah, uh, might be, might be so. Yeah. Um, and a more like a more, uh, shall we say, an average, usually mm-hmm. not the not the mm-hmm. not the hyperbolic, not the mm-hmm. hy- hyperbolized mm-hmm. hero. Mm-hmm. I'm saying. Mm. Well, uh, to to name one symbol or mm-hmm. symbolic. Uh, object or person, it's. I think it's um, dangerous, right? Uh, mm-hmm. It will create yeah. some kind of a stereotype, yeah, and controversy. Yeah, yeah. So that is true. Um, <laughs> yeah. So let's say I'm not really interested in uh, mm-hmm. naming one, mm-hmm. right? If I can name one hundred, <laughs> I may fine. be able that to do that. <laughs> yeah, five might be okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. I guess. That's it. Thank you very much Thank for, you. for your Thank lecture you. and for this interview. It Great. was a big pleasure. Yeah, Thank very you. nice meeting you. Thank you.